What's going on, YouTubers? Welcome to another video. We're going to be doing some statue previews today. Before I do, just wanted to throw out that someone offered me a decent chunk of change for that Chucky doll. And I'm contemplating selling it just because of the money, not because I don't like it. I love it, actually. I think it's the best Chucky doll out there for movies one through three. And I do really like this display quite a bit. <clears throat> you know, when I have the NECA... Which, like I said in the review, I do think is a little bit better than that one. However, that represents Bride, and if you want to call it Seed, that is the classic Chucky from 1 through 3. So it's kind of hard not to have an OG Chucky. But, <clears throat> I got offered $1,500, which is a lot of money. And I could use that for pre-orders. But what do you guys think? Should we sell it? Now, if I sell it, I'd probably have to just completely remove that Chucky box put those two there and do the nun and Annabelle right there, which would free that up to move the alien back there again. That would be the scenario if I do sell this Chucky. So what do you guys think? Should we, you know, sell that Chucky? Here's a good look at it. It really is an incredible, you know, custom Chucky. And I really like it. So pretty difficult, but it's, Pretty good amount of money as well. All right, so let's check out what's new on Sideshow's website, see if there's anything cool. Spider-Man Noir, what is this? Exclusive battle damage portrait and swap out spider idol. What's the collectors look like? I do remember him from the Spider-Man movie. I do prefer that look. The 26 inches tall, climbing up some sort of building, Spider-Man pose, holding a grappling gun. Kind of weird holding a grappling gun as Spider-Man, honestly. Looks pretty cool, though. I gotta say, like, if you're into collecting Spider-Mans, $690, classic sideshow price, and is there an addition size at all on this? It is a Daniel Bell sculpt, who's one heck of a sculptor, no doubt. I would definitely get the EX for that, at least. I mean, that portrait's still cool. I don't know anything about it. I just think that looks more Spider-Man to me. But this is pretty cool. You know, not a bad price either for a one-fourth scale. Now, here's something I do like. So I played Killer Instinct quite a bit growing up. Uh, you know, my, we actually owned like the original big arcade, me and my brothers, and we'd play it all the time. And Sabretooth was actually my main in Killer Instinct. I played him and the Hex, uh, the Indian guy, I can't remember his name. You know, where you do like the headbutts, I always love doing those. So we got three different versions. I would probably go between Collectors and Player 2 versus the White Wolf with gold. I'm not a big fan of that gold. I'd probably go with the Collectors, which I believe is the classic look. 700 bucks, So, pretty decent price for a 1-4 scale. 17 and a half inches tall, so it's not super tall. So, you know, definitely easily displayable. Uh, I like the fact they put the Killer Instinct logo, because a lot of people that might see this, like, who the heck is this random, you know, werewolf? And it has a skull and bone and like a broken bridge. I'm sure this is from some level in Killer Instinct. Includes swap out cybernetic arms. Okay. I'm curious if the white wolf also has like... Yeah, it has normal arms. See, I don't like the cybernetic look, honestly. I'm assuming this one has normal arms as well. Yeah, they all do. I don't like the cybernetic look. It just doesn't look good to me. You know, in that case, I think all three work good. It just depends which color you want, blue, black, or white. But I don't like the cybernetic look. They, they also have the full gore one-fourth, you know, which I really like as well because I loved full gore as well. So these two would obviously pair really good together. And I am glad PCS is making, you know, Killer Instinct statues. I think it's really cool. I would collect these. Like, I would get both 
if I had the space and if PCS went like all in and did at least like six characters. But yeah, no, no purchasing for me. Uh, you know, obviously space is a huge concern in my video game room. Let's see what else we got. The armored helmet. What is that from? Star Wars. Okay. Here's something that's really cool. I like this. The Ant-Man 1 by Aaron Studios. I don't know if I've shown this before, but I like this. I think it's really cool. I think Iron Studios did a stellar job on this. The fact it's pretty big as well as 16 inches, you know, and it includes his whole family, but I think this is awesome. Really like that uh, effect of going from big to small or small to big, however you want to look at it. Uh, but I think this is great looking. So, $525, decent price, considering how big it is. You can also get the standard Ant-Man. I just watched the newest Power Rangers movie on Netflix. Now, I didn't grow up watching Power Rangers, but man, that movie was so cheesy. Check this out by Iron Studios. Now, this is $8.50 for a one-tenth, but I believe it's quite big. Yeah, 20 inches. And I remember this movie growing up, Fantasia, Mickey Mouse playing with the water and these little broomsticks, the buckets. So it, this is definitely really cool, especially like for those who are Disney collectors. My uncle was huge into collecting Disney, like Mickey Mouse stuff. He had such a collection, all in like glass shells. Anytime you'd go to his house, you'd see this massive Mickey Mouse house. He had a Mickey Mouse lawn, no joke. And everything was themed Mickey Mouse you know, they worked at Disney World as well, like his children, and they were just such fans. I loved going to his house. It was awesome. You know, that was like the first time I saw a true collector. But that's pretty cool. You also have Scar from Lion King. Now, Lion King was one of my favorite movies growing up. This is also 500 bucks, but it's pretty decently sized. 12 inches, you get three hyenas. You know, I loved Lion King growing up. I freaking cried like a baby when Mufasa died when I was a little kid. Yeah, I mean, that's a decent-sized one-tenth scale, you know. And it is great that you see statues coming from, you know, like, nobody would expect a Lion King or a Fantasia statue. You know, like, I would never see, like, Sideshow or Prime 1 doing this type of stuff. So I think it's great that Iron Studios has given us this type of statues, honestly. Boba Fett and Rancor, again, another one-tenth scale. Here's a Catwoman. I think this is one-fourth. By Iron Studios, Michelle Pfeiffer, sitting down. I'm not part of the Michelle Pfeiffer hype train like your average collector is, where they're all like, that's their Catwoman. I've seen the movie, and I don't know, like, maybe, it, you know, I know a lot of, like, older movies are much better when they first came out, where now when you try to watch them, it's kind of hard if you didn't grow up watching it, where I can go back and watch all my old favorites and love them every time. You know, so for me, like, the Keaton Batman movies are, like, you know, B-level movies for me. They're just not amazing. Is there anything else here? Penguin, PF, I know I talked about that before. Black Manta Helmet, $1,000, Jupiter. That's just wild. Let's check out something that uh, Prime won. All right, so you have a few new statues here. The T-Rex. And the Jujutsu Kenzen, which is an amazing anime, by the way. So Satori Gogu, he's like the teacher of the kid fighting against the demons. 1099, and this is only one six scale at 19 inches tall. So pretty pricey, honestly. Like that's Sume prices right there. But pretty cool looking statue, I will say. I like him best. That's how I like kind of recognize him. I remember him like, you know, revealing his eye during some fights against some really tough demons. ES of only 300 though. Showcasing his power. Multiple swap outs. Definitely a cool piece, no doubt. Now you got the T-Rex companion to him. And I think this T-Rex looks great. It is the same price as the ECC T-Rex. And ECC was bigger. And obviously it has glass eyes and 
really good paint app, looks very realistic. My biggest problem with ECC is it's too basic. The base, the pose, I like my T-Rexes open mouth so you can see that detail. And Prime 1 T-Rexes still look amazing, don't get me wrong. But yeah, this looks great. Uh, light up in that back wall. 350 ES. I'm still waiting for the Geek and Taurus. That's the one I want to get. Or I want to see how if it will fit right there where we got blue. Because, you know, that would be like the final main villain dinosaur that I don't own is the Geek and Taurus. You know, because I have all the main ones. Uh, that's kind of it through Prime 1. Not a lot has really gone up for PO with them. But let's just check Specs website real quick. That's an easy place. Featured POs. All right, we have this Boo combo, and I think that's one six scale. That's also on Sideshow's website, but I didn't see it. But that's okay. It's not super impressive. What's this? One six Frodo. Who made that? Weta. And it looks like it's shipping now. It must be older. The heck is this? Four Horsemen Death. I think that's XM. Yeah, do you have the Pacific Rim? I know I've looked at that. There is one thing I want to show you guys, this custom piece that's super sick. All right, so this is by Onur Simsek. Uh, limited to only 50, and it is Bulg from The Hobbit. Uh, they also made, you know, like, check out the scale of this. Pretty massive. It's like, yeah, that's huge. It's like a Prime 1 styled Lord of the Rings, but from The Hobbit. In addition, he made the Dark Rider of Mordor 1 fourth scale Prime 1 style. So it's kind of like the old Sideshow one that I used to own, but with a Prime 1 base. You know, it looks very similar. I think that looks legit. Look at that. That is sick. I love that base. You know, just like my Prime 1. Really nice weathered, looks great. You know, and it, I believe this is like 28 or 29 inches tall. The sideshow one was like 27, so you're just getting that extra height from the base, really. This one also looks really good. You know, but check out the detail on this bulk statue. This is insane, look at that. Love the cut wounds, the vein work, perfect likeness, the blood, massive weapon, the like, almost like humans coming out of his garments. Awesome, again, awesome, like Prime 1 style base. So it like, would just fit in with a Prime 1 Lord of the Rings collection perfectly. So super, super legit. No, even has, like, if you see right there, real hair. Yeah, that, that's just a legit, like, one of the best customs I've honestly seen for, like, a 1-4 scale statue. You know, this is just up there as some of the best work I've seen. So, this is really good. I love that. Uh, one last thing I wanted to show you guys. Just some random photoshops I was throwing together in my, you know, this morning. <laughs> I'm always throwing uh, random photoshops, but, you know, this is kind of the idea if I wanted to, like, Sort of have a Trinity girl wall, Justice League wall, and sort of, you know, like that's that would be like the girl wall. You kind of get the picture bust, J and D, J and D, bust, bust, J and D, J and D, bust. Uh, and then, of course, Wonder Woman is still part of the Trinity wall, which would technically start here and going into the Batman and then into Aquaman and remaining League members. So, what do you guys think of that? Do you think that's better than my current uh, plan? I think it's a pretty solid idea. I mean, there's definitely the con of, you know, the Trinity wall looks perfect right now. It really does. The way I have that set up like this, I think it's perfect. Uh, so, to put Batman there, it wouldn't quite have that same effect. You know, so... It, you know, obviously they're all still technically together and you have Superman more or less in the middle. 
However, you know, it would allow Mara busts one third, you know, and then JMD's there, which would fit. And then Aquaman bust would go here like that. And this would allow all the big prime ones together, not incorporating a JMD in this setup. Because as you saw in my Mara, you know, video, JD doesn't scale good with Prime 1. You know, look at Harley next to Bats. Just tiny. And that's on a little one-inch Lazy Susan, bear in mind. But it's a solid 30% smaller. Now, granted, Mara is, you know, I don't know Amber Heard's height. I'm guessing 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, Steppenwolf is probably 8 feet, 7 and a half feet. So, of course, he's going to be way bigger than her. So, it'll be interesting to see that. Man, I'm alive, though. That Maribust is freaking gorgeous. By the way, if any of you are looking for Maribust, a buddy of mine, Bruce Way, owner of Inner Studios, does have one in stock now for 4200 shipped. So, if you want to get Mara now, reach out to him. Mention me. Uh, just trying to help him out. Uh, but she is definitely... One of my all-time favorite busts now in my collection. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. Uh, but anyways, folks, I will see you guys in the next video. Now, I got a random tracking of 42 pounds. Don't know what it is. Could be Loki bust, but I feel like the weight isn't heavy enough. And it's arriving Monday, so don't know exactly what that is. Uh, but definitely got in uh, at least two statues next week. Aquaman bust is one. And uh, there will be a surprise. Uh, but let's see what Monday comes, because maybe it's Loki. Because uh, Queen never gave me a proper tracking number for Loki. But I have a random tracking number. Uh, anyways, folks, that is it. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're looking to buy statues, use the links below. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.